So, these different things that I said we were going to talk about today. I said we're going to talk about proper, improper and mixed. So, I've got some orange pictures here. Hopefully these will help us explain. Let's get a cool orange colour to do it with. Excellent. Okay, so a proper fraction has a larger denominator than a numerator. So I'm going to draw a proper fraction here, three quarters. And this picture here of our orange whoop, is three quarters of an orange. Okay, four parts make the whole. One, do another color. One, two, three. Four parts make the whole, and we have three of them. One, two, and three. So a proper fraction is one that has a larger denominator, so the guy on the bottom, than a numerator, the guy on the top. That's pretty straightforward. Mainly, proper fractions are the ones that you guys normally have seen, okay? So that's proper fractions, done and dusted. The next thing we need to look at is improper fractions and mixed numerals, okay? Improper fractions have a larger numerator than they do a denominator. So this one will have 9 over 4. That is an example of an improper fraction. If we look to the picture to the left of us, we can see that four parts make up a whole. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have nine parts that have made up the whole. Four parts make up a whole. That's how we write it that way. I'm just going to put that back there for you. 9 over 4. Okay, mixed numerals, on the other hand, involve a whole number and a fraction. Okay, so if I was to take a mixed numeral of these same oranges here, I could write it as 2 and 1 over 4, because I've got two holes, 1, 2, and 1 over 4, because four parts make the whole, and I've got one of them left over. You might notice something. When I was describing and giving you a definition of an improper fraction and a mixed numeral, I used the same picture. Okay, and I used the same example. Why did I do that? Because mixed numerals and improper fractions are just two different ways of representing exactly the same thing. So, these oranges here can either be represented in an improper fraction or a mixed numeral. It doesn't matter. Okay, they're just two different ways or two different ways of representing exactly the same thing. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about how we can convert, let me just do this, how we can convert improper to mixed numerals and mixed numerals back to improper. So let's have a look. Let's first start looking at our improper fractions and see if we can convert them to mixed numerals. I've got a few examples here and I'll start with this one. Okay, so we've got 5 over 4. I know it is an improper fraction because my numerator is greater than my denominator. That's how I know it's an improper. If it was a proper fraction, it would have a numerator that was larger. Okay, how do we do this? Very simple, very straightforward. First we look at the denominator and we say, how many times does it go into the numerator? And I can see that it goes once, but I have a problem. I have one remaining, okay? So how do I write that that was one remaining? I write it 1 over whatever my original denominator was, 1 over 4. So 5 quarters is the same as writing 1 over 4. Let's just check to see if we're right, okay? Let's draw a hole, okay? How many parts make up my hole? It's already been told to me, it's 4. Okay, 4 parts make up a hole. And how many parts do I have? I have five. So one, two, three, four, five. One and a quarter. One and a quarter. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so I've done it the right way. That's a good way of quickly checking if you're still a little bit uncertain. Okay, next example. Let's get five over a quarter out of the way. Here we go. 14 over 12. Okay, 14 over 12. So again, how many times does 12 go into 14? Once. How many remaining? 2 over my original denominator, which was 12. So my answer is 1 and 2 twelfths. That's how I have converted an improper fraction into a mixed numeral. 
Now guys, I'm really sorry I don't feel like drawing an orange with 12 parts. So hopefully we can just remember in our head that, yeah, that's the way I can check and if I really want to draw it down, I can. Okay, one last example. Okay, I've got 17 on 10. Okay, 17 over 10. Okay, so how many times does 10 go into 17? Once with a remainder of 7. What's my original denominator? 10. So it's 1 and 7 tenths. Simple as that. How many times does my denominator go into my numerator? Whatever my remainder is becomes this guy. My denominator here is my original one. Simple as that. Let's look at it going the reverse way. So I've already got my mixed numeral and now I need to convert it into an improper fraction. There's a few steps here. First thing I need to do is I multiply my denominator by my whole number. So 8 fours are 32 and then with 32 I then add my numerator. So it becomes 32 plus 3 is 35 over 8. Okay, so it becomes 35 over 8. So the first step is that I multiply and then with that new number I then add my numerator. So 8 multiplied by 4, 32, plus 3 becomes 35. Let's have a look at another example. Okay, oh, we've got some more things to get rid of. There we go. Let's have a look at my other another example. Okay, here we go. This one might be a little bit easier. So, again, same process. 4 times 10 is 40. Then with my new number, my new number of 40, I add 1. So it becomes 41 over 4. 41 over 4 is a way of representing 10 and a quarter as an improper fraction. One more example. Let's have a look. Okay. This one here. Again, I follow the exact same steps. 12 multiplied by 3. 3 is 36. My new number of 36 plus 2. 36 plus 2 is 38. And I keep my same denominator on 12. So it becomes 38 on 12. It's as simple as that, guys. It's just remembering how to convert. I go this number multiplied by that, and that with that new number, I add whatever's on my numerator. So it's a three-step process. It's one, two, three. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, good luck, guys.